On the banner front and center is the most powerful word for our world, that simple word, resurrection. Because it's the power of the resurrection of Jesus that is our entire hope. Everything we are, everything we hope to be is because of the resurrection. There's also two very important reminders of what brought that about on the stage. We have the cross over here, and then we have representation of the tomb over here. I want you to note something. Those both have something in common. They're empty. That's the glorious part. We don't have Jesus on the cross. He's not there. And he's not in the tomb. He rose again. He's at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. And I think it's so fitting that on Easter Sunday, Pastor Grace and I would have just come home from Africa because he told us to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And then this morning, we're praying over Stephen and Danae because they're getting ready to go to Bolivia. Because this church believes in fulfilling the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And I'm so thankful because God has given us the privilege to be a pastor of a church like LifeBridge. But I realize that our church is far bigger than what just happens in our coming together here on Sunday. It says each one of you go out into what God's called you to in your life and wherever your place of employment, wherever you are engaged in the community, that's, that's the call of God on all of our lives. And then there's a unique sense in which God has blessed us in that there's a number of folks who've been called into ministries that take them various places around the world. And uh, I'm so glad because a number of those folks are here in service with us today. And I've, already we prayed over Steve and Danae and the ministry that God has given to them. Uh, I, I'm thankful I look back here at our dear Rich Cummins and uh, there's getting ready to be some new things that are getting ready to happen. They're going to take Rich to a whole new trajectory of what God's called him to be and what he's doing in he and Danielle's life. And we're so grateful that we're the home for you guys. I look down here on the front row and I see the Ballinger boys, uh, <laughs> father and son, and uh, Billy and Jody who tremendous ministry. I'm so glad you guys are part of Life Ridge. Larry, I'm glad you brought them to church a few years ago. You started all this with them. And then Jared now with Destiny Rescue. That's just a, a huge blessing to, uh, to have you as a part of what God's doing as a part of Life Ridge. And, and Shelly, what God's called you to in New and Living Way. He's got great things that he's going to do in the days ahead. Eric, what you're doing in motorcycle ministry. There's just so many. Polo and Sarah, God's going to raise y'all up to ministry greater than you've ever had before. There's, there's, the days are ahead of great things. And I'm going to get in trouble here because I want to miss somebody. But there's good things that God is doing we have a privilege of. And, and, and I thought a few days ago when we were in Africa that it was so interesting, and I don't think it's any accident that we were actually in Africa the week leading into Easter. Because when I think of Gambia and I think of Saw and Manuela, who are another couple that are a part of our family that are out in ministry, and they're still in Gambia right now, and uh, they're probably joining us in the service. So everybody say, Good morning, Saw and Manuela. <laughs> and uh, it just is interesting because their story has the fingerprints of resurrection power all over it. And uh, for me and for us, that journey began about nine years ago this past November. It was interesting, and I won't go into all the details because many of you have already heard this, but Grace and I had just met, and uh, we had actually literally... 
uh, been corresponding and then met in person on a Friday and, uh, and then on a Saturday we met again and then on Sunday we talked on the phone for I think it was eight hours and neither one of us are big phone talkers. And the next day, she said to me, she says, I'm a little overwhelmed. Could we just have some space for a few days? And I thought, no problem. I'm going to California this week. And I went to Los Angeles to a meeting that was a a workshop that Foursquare Missions was putting on for their missionaries that are going out to be missionaries. And then with pastors that they wanted to train to be coaches with missionaries as they're in the process of establishing their support base to go out in ministry. So they had invited me to be one of those pastors. And I was there for several days, and during those days, there were probably about 30 of us total. There was a couple that I had never really engaged during the time we were there, and the last day, the folks who were doing the training said, now today, what we want is we want you pastors that are here to look around and pick out one of the missionaries or missionary couples and have them give you their speech about their ministry and what they're going to do, and you critique it. And I just felt like the Lord laid on my heart to reach out to Saul and Manuela and have them share the story. And so that's how we began to engage in conversation. And uh, when they got through telling the story, I said, who do I make a check to? And they thought I was just kidding, that I was just role-playing. If I had just known, I could have gotten by with not having to give them anything. But the Lord had just so touched my heart, I wanted to invest in what he'd called them to be. And that began this journey of our relationship. And, and when we are involved in missions as a church, and, and if you're here any length of time, you know that's a big deal for us at LifeBridge. And every year in October, we devote that whole month to just emphasizing our missions around the world. But it's not just something that's pictures on the wall, we believe in being relationally connected to the people that we are involved with in missions. And so that relationship began to grow with Saul Manuela, and as Grace and I got to know them better, it ended up leading to a point that in 2016, we took a group, and Brent's back here was on that trip with us, and we went to Gambia for the first time. And uh, it was quite an experience, literally. When we got off the plane, we had not gotten more than maybe a mile, probably a half a mile from the airport, and traffic was backed up. And when we got up close, we realized why. We had been on the plane for hours without much good food. And we were all thinking, boy, we're going to get something to eat. And then we're pulling up, and right on the side of the road, someone had hit a cow. And there were guys out there with their knives butchering the cow on the side of the road. Welcome to Africa. We weren't all very hungry after that. But it began a journey of being hands-on involved in ministry that we're connected to. Then in 2018, we went back again with Roger and Shelley, and God began to just unfold it more. And then as many of you are aware, because you're part of the church family here, uh, Grace and I went with Saul Manuela just a few days ago back again, and uh, we spent what was it, five or six days on the ground. It's, it's about a two-day venture to get there and a two-day venture to come back. And I will tell you something. One of the most beautiful sights in the world is when you come back home and you get to the Brussels airport and you see the Starbucks sign. I just can't tell you what a blessing that was in my life. But the truth is that that experience and what has happened and and the role that God has given us with their ministry, shared blessings in being spiritual advisors to that ministry is such a blessing of God and it's such a reminder that it's all about the power of his resurrection. And one of the special parts of this trip was that we had the honor of being involved in being in the first credentialing of ministers under shared blessing in Gambia. If you were here last Sunday, you would have seen the video greeting that had the picture uh, that was us with 
with Saw Manuela and then Pastor Dan and Pastor Hope. He is the administrator, the principal of their school, and he and his wife work together. They're both ministers, and we had the privilege of credentialing them uh, a week ago Friday so that they now are going to launch into a whole new avenue of ministry. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about as the morning progresses today. Now, another little neat sidebar, and this is how God just works in so many different ways to affirm us and affirm what he's doing. We're there at that ceremony, and uh, there's a minister there who's leading worship. And on one of the songs, his wife gets up and joins him in leading worship. And she was about 14 months pregnant, it looked like. Uh, probably wasn't that long, but it was, she was overdue. <laughs> I'm sorry. Some of those things just pop out. But uh, <laughs> Pastor Paul and his wife, Delight, we met them. And after that credentialing service, Grace asked her, she said, could I just pray for you and pray that God will let that baby come quickly? And she said, you certainly can. Well, the next day, saw Manuela get a text message, and guess what had happened? She had had the baby, all is well, and guess what the baby's name is? Grace. So isn't that sweet? It's just the little touches of God's goodness. And from the most profound thing God does to those simple little touches, it all comes out of this resurrection power of Jesus. And I want to talk to you about this morning. And as we talk about what God's doing with the resurrection power in Gambia, I want you to also recognize he's not limited to the smallest geographical nation in Africa. What God's doing in Gambia, he wants to do here. He wants to do in all of our lives. He wants to release his resurrection power. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 reads this way. Celebrate with praises the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has shown us his extravagant mercy. For his fountain of mercy has given us a new life. We are reborn to experience a living, energetic hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We are reborn into a perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled, and never diminish. It is promised and preserved forever in the heavenly realm for you. God's not some politician running for office. He's the creator of the universe, and if he said it, it's going to happen. I want to talk to you this morning about some of what I would see as strategic elements of resurrection power and, and uh, some of what we've seen demonstrated in these last few days and in our connection with Saw Manuela in Gambia. The, the most basic is this. Resurrection power transforms lives. Saul Ba is a Gambian. He grew up there. 95% of the people who live in Gambia are Muslim. And Saul was raised in a Muslim home. 1989, he had the opportunity to come to the United States as a young man. Went to work, and uh, there was a young woman who was working in the same place. And uh, she began to talk to him about Jesus. She was new to the United States as well. Her family had just escaped from the days of communism in Romania and had come as immigrants to the U.S., and she was, I think, 20 when they arrived here. And so she began, they were, were Pentecostal Christians who had escaped communist Romania. And uh, she began to talk to Saul, and Saul kept asking questions, and there was a point at which he decided that he didn't want to be a Muslim anymore because he had met Jesus, and he became a believer. And God was up to something. And so you, you kind of know the rest of the story. That kind of turned into more than just them being friends. Because God had gone all the way to Gambia and brought a young man to the U.S. to get saved. So that he could meet a young woman that he brought all the way from Romania to the U.S. So that he could work through them to transform the nation of Gambia. And so Saul's power, God's power at work in Saul's life changed everything. And so God is an amazing God. Now, Saul's father 
is getting ready to be 92 years old. Has been living in the United States for a number of years. We've been praying for him. Believing that he'll just have a full revelation of God. He's the man who hungers for spiritual things. He's so committed to religion and pursuit of God that he literally built a mosque on the property he owns in Gambia. He's been fascinated by the ministry that Solomon Willer engaged in. And it so happened that he and his other son and wife were to travel from the U.S. to Gambia and that they would be there while we were in Gambia. So we were so excited about that opportunity. It's been interesting. We've nearly met him several times and talked to him on the phone, but had not met him in person. And then at the last minute, he was not feeling well, and they had to postpone their flight. But God has a way of doing things, and we can't look at how it works out as we're seeing it unfold and say, oh, this isn't working because God works in unusual ways. And it looked like we weren't going to see him at all. But then the day that we were to fly home, guess what happened? We were to fly out at 730 that evening. They were to fly in at four o'clock. So at the airport, we got to meet Saul's dad and had an opportunity. And I said to him, can I just pray for you? And he said, you sure can. And so I just prayed God's blessing in his life. And he told Saul after we left, he said, I know those people pray for us. And he said, their prayers got me here. I want you to keep praying and believing with us because I believe while they're there, while Saul and Manuel are there, he's going to see the quest of his life to know God revealed to him who Jesus is so that he can experience the fullness of having his life transformed. It's what God does. That's what redemption power does. And it's so important that you and I understand this, that when re resurrection power transforms our lives, it breaks the power of sin. Has anybody messed up this week? Anybody done something you shouldn't have done? Well, if there is anybody who hasn't, I would love to have you stand up so I could throw a rock at you or something. <laughs> But the truth is, we all have messed up. And the problem was, pre-cross and empty tomb, we were doomed because sin controlled us. But the good news is because Jesus died for us and because he rose again from the dead, sin has no power. That's what sets Saul free. That's the revelation his dad's going to receive. And it means this, that the full potential of what life and eternity is, is available to you and to me. I want you to think about this. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And poof, there was light. God said, let us create man in our own image. And in his likeness, God created us. And the power that could do all that is resident inside of you. If you have the resurrection power, it transforms our lives. Second thing is resurrection power energizes divine appointments. I'm going to tell you. That meeting that I had with Saw Manuela in California was a divine appointment. I knew as plain as day, God had told me, have that couple share with you. And it began something far beyond just a little exercise that they were having us do in training. It began the relationship that we're still experiencing the fullness of today. And, and it's not just in those kinds of things that, that have really huge significance because of how we look at how it's impacted us as a church. How it's impacting and going to impact Gambia because we're a part of what God's called them to do. But it's also sometimes when we begin to understand this, we have all kinds of divine appointments and God's always at work in our life helping us every day he's available for whatever you're going through the day that we arrived in Gambia saw Manuela were coming to pick us up at the airport I don't know how to describe traffic to you there 
the roads are, are even the best roads are, are pretty much mostly two lane. And uh, there's traffic, just unbelievable traffic. Not a lot of people can afford to have cars. So there's taxis. That's got to be the capital of the world for old Mercedes that are now taxis. And there's just every kind of vehicle. Literally one day we're driving down the road and here's a little minivan and, you know, they're made for, what, six or seven people? There were 12 people, at least, in that minivan. And I looked over out our side window, and in the back right corner, and, of course, they didn't have air conditioning in the van, so the windows were open. I looked, and out of the very back corner, sticking his head out the window, was a goat with the 12 people in that van. It was just so funny to see that. But literally, it's just unbelievable, the traffic and how long it takes you to get places. And so Saul and Manuel were on the way to pick us up. They're in the middle of heavy traffic on one of those busy roads. And all of a sudden, boom, a tire blew out on their vehicle. You got to remember, they haven't been there for four years. And so they have had people check it on things, but stuff happens. Tire blew out. And literally, as the tire blew out, they could hear it. And they looked, and across the road, a guy was running across the road with a jack. There was a tire shop immediately across the road from where it blew out. And the guy literally changed the tire right in the middle of the road so they could come to get us. God knew exactly where to put the tire shop so that it'd be in the right place at the right time for Saul and Manuela when they needed it. God has little simple divine appointments in our life. Now, another one, you, you know, in order to be able to come back to the U.S. after we had been there, this thought had crossed my mind several times. You have to have a negative COVID test. And, and I was a little apprehensive, if I'm honest about it, of God, dear God, please let us not get a false positive. Because I didn't believe we'd have COVID, but I just, you know, you, you, you know, and, and you think, oh my. And if you could see the place where we got our COVID test done, you'd say, oh my. But basically... The day that we were supposed to get the COVID test, you have to do it within a certain time period of when you're coming back. So it had to be done on a Sunday, a week ago today. And uh, I had read about where we had to go to get it, what we had to do, but I had missed one line, and that was this. That ahead of time, you have to make a wire transfer of the money for the fee so that you bring the receipt showing you directly transferred the money into their bank account so that they will do the test. It's now Saturday. This is the month of Ramadan in a 95% Muslim country. And every bank, every Western Union, everything that could possibly transact money is closed. And so we're on Saturday evening. What are we going to do? And Saul's sister who lives there had come to have dinner with us at the hotel and Saul had talked to the people that run the clinic, and the guy said, if you don't get something figured out, here's my number, call me. So Saul had called him, and he put him through to someone else, who's the guy who was supposed to be there the day we came to get the test. Saul's sister, I don't know if I put the fear of God in her. I said, you know if you don't work this out, we're just going to stay here and live with you. But she basically talked to a guy she had never met before, and convinced him, because he had a bank account in the same bank where he could transfer the funds so that he could get a receipt. And she talked him in to doing a transfer of those funds and sending us by email a receipt we could print out with the promise that we would give him the money the next day when we showed. And he did it. I want to tell you. Resurrection power is an amazing thing of the favor God gives us for appointments in life. And it's not just in Gambia. It's important to know that God, if you look back in your life, there's been major things that have happened that God's intervention is why you're here today. And if you look, there's some of those littler things that we look at and we just say, oh, well, that's just a coincidence. I don't think so. I think God knew where they needed to be when that tire went out. I think that tire was ready to blow three blocks before it happened. And God just had an angel hold it until they got to that exact spot so the tire shop would be there. You say, I don't believe that. Well, then you have a flat and walk to get it fixed. But basically, God's amazing at what he does to give favor because of his resurrection power. And then resurrection. 
resurrection power imparts and implements vision. This whole journey of, of this experience with Gambia, it all began of the call and vision that God put in Saul Manuela's heart. I actually began to work in Manuela's heart before they were married. Manuela, in the late 90s, I think it was 98 or 99, actually took a trip by herself on vacation from her work, went to Gambia, stayed with Saul's family, and uh, took band-aids and different things and just began to minister to the children that lived around his parents' compound. His dad was very moved by what he saw her doing in caring for children. And God put in her heart the knowing that they were called to Gambia. They got married. They knew they were called. God began to open doors. There was a gentleman. They would go on their vacation every year and spend the vacation. And there was a gentleman who has very successful business who said to them, what would it take for you to quit your jobs and do this and concentrate on it? And they told him, he said, done. And he's ever since then, through his foundation, underwritten their personal cost. And then God's just begun to open up doors. By uh, 2002, I believe it was, Saul's dad. Now, this is how God works and how he lets vision be carried forth. They knew they were supposed to do a school. And Saul's dad owned a piece of property, 1.3 acres. And this Muslim dad sold his Christian son property for a Christian school. And that's where the school is today. And in 2005, Shared Blessings opened the Emmanuel Mission School. And then God began to unpack vision for Saul and Manuela. And we met them and uh, the bond I've talked about and the trip that we went in 2016 just begin to confirm more and more the vision. I, I believe for a long time, the verse in Psalms that says, ask me and I'll give you the nations for an inheritance. And I began to ask God for Gambia a long time ago. And when we went in 2016, Brent, that was quite a trip, wasn't it? And uh, Shelly's daughter, Lynn, was with us on that trip. And uh, we talked to Roger and Shelly Deem about that trip. And in 2018, I remember when Roger talked to me and said, would you consider if, if we went, if you and Grace would go, and we could just explore what could be possible in Gambia. And what happened, Son Manuela had been through years of doing ministry in a land that's demonic. Because you see, you not only have Islam with 95% of the people, most of them continue to practice tribal religion. So you have witchcraft interwoven with the, the ideology of Islam. And so you have a pretty stronghold that's bound together from those two religions. It's a dark country spiritually. And so they have fought that for years. And, and when we were there with Roger and Shelley, Saul was beginning to fight this intense physical battle that we've been praying over for years as a church that was a digestive problem that doctors could not diagnose what's causing it, but it had him deathly ill. And we were there, and, and I remember us dreaming of what God could do. And during that trip, the, the vision that God had given them, it was like God began to turn the light on it. And I'll never forget Roger sharing with them as God was putting in his heart things that was confirming and giving them the ability to expand what they had seen into what could be and the vision that could be possible of what God could do in Gambia. And then a few weeks after we left, they had to come home because of Saul's health. And it seemed as if the vision was dead but you know, it's interesting. God is never finished till he's finished. And God kept burning the vision in Saul and Manuela's heart. And he began to shape other things that have now begun to come to pass 
in their time being back in the States. And because of, of dear folks like uh, Pastor Dan and Pastor Hope, the school's been able to carry on through these four years. And now as we put foot on the ground and we begin to talk about what could be, guess what began to happen? God began to release the vision that they began to have back when Manuela went there before they were even married. They began to expand with them as a couple. That expanded when we were sitting with Roger and Shelley and them talking about what could be. And now for me to see, I'm sorry this morning, I can't help but talk about this. You're just going to have to bear with me today because I'm watching the faithful of God in what seemed impossible. The vision that he began over 20 years ago is now coming into a clear focus that's going to go to a whole new level of what God wants to do. It's important that you and I be people of vision. God doesn't want to just give vision to Saul Manuel and Gambia. God wants Lifebridge to have vision that's fresh and new. God wants us in our lives to have vision. What are you here for besides going to work or besides pleasure? What is it that God wants to do through you that you can allow him to do? God wants you to be able to see over and beyond the natural realm and look in the supernatural and don't just look at the realities of water on the ground look above and see the possibilities of what God could do he said to Abraham I'm going to give you the land as far as you can see it how far can you see what are you willing to look for? What are you willing to let God do? And then believe that God's going to empower you to fulfill whatever it is that he shows you. Resurrection power also raises up the next generation. When we arrived at the school on Wednesday after we flew in on Tuesday, it was the first time I saw Manuela. They had just gotten there the day before we did. It was the first time that they had been back at the school in four years. And when we drove up into the property, a young girl, when she saw them, ran over and just grabbed each of them and wouldn't let them go. She had no idea they were coming. Little Bintu is an eighth grader in the school. Bintu came to the school when she was in first grade. Interesting Saul had gone because there was a Dutch furniture company that was going to give furniture to the school. And when he was there, there was a Gambian man that was working in the Dutch store. And uh, when he said the name of the school, the man says, oh, my little girl goes there to school. It was Bintu's dad. But he's a Muslim. And uh, he and his wife were divorced. Her mother had, she's the sixth of ten children. But she was living with her aunt because that's just how messed up all their family situation was. And so the stabilizer in her life all these years has been a manual mission school. And through that school, she's come to know Jesus. She goes home and tells her family about Jesus. And guess what? She's been persecuted in her own home because they're Muslim. They don't believe. But she's determined she's going to hold her faith. And so there she was, she was grabbing hold of Saul Manuela, and she said to them, I don't want to be done next year, because the school goes through ninth grade. She says, I need at least three or four more years here. And it just witnessed in all of our hearts that something that's been a dream down the road is it's time to launch the high school. And Saul and I were talking to Pastor Dan and Saul said to him, what do you think about the possibility of doing a high school? He says, I'm up for it. He used to be a principal of a high school in the past. And so I would say that it's very likely that after Bintu finishes her ninth grade next year, there will be a 10th grade at a manual mission school and then a grade added until it's a full high school.
The reason that's so important is because they've watched kids who've come through that have done well, and then after ninth grade, they either don't have the ability to continue school or they go to some other school and they lose out in their relationship with God. This will give them a chance to ground the kids. There's things that will happen from a standpoint of college prep that they can do with them. There's a Bible school in the works for those going into the ministry. I'm telling you, God's getting ready to release the next level of what God wants to do because God wants to raise up the next generation and resurrection power, does it? On Sunday last week, we went to the church that presently Pastor Dan and Pastor Hope are as an interim pastor in a church for a denomination that comes out of Nigeria that does missions work in Gambia. In the service, a young woman got up and, and received the offering. I'd love to bring her here to receive the offering. She'd empty your pockets. But basically, this young woman, Abigail, was just obvious there's an anointing of God on her life. And uh, she's Nigerian, but her parents came from Nigeria to Gambia, Gambia's missionaries, and her whole life she's lived in Gambia. But the last two years, she's been in Great Britain because she just completed a master's degree in microbiology. And so I watched her take the offering and the anointing that was on her life. We had a chance to pray over her after the service. I want to tell you, that girl is going to be part of changing the nation of Gambia. Bintu is going to be a part of changing the nation of Gambia because God is raising up a generation. And that's why what saw in Manuela, what the school is doing, is so important. Listen. It's important that you and I know this. We frequently get caught in talking about generational curses. And I'm here to tell you that if there's things that have been passed down, if you've been from an abused past, I don't deny anything related to that except this one thing. The resurrection power of Jesus has broken every generational curse that ever existed. You need to begin to realize it's also released the blessing that God wants to pass from generation to generation. And I believe God's going to do that for those students in Gambia that are living in a world that is filled with demonic practice, that's filled with Islamic worship. God's going to set them free and generationally they are going to be set free and they're going to set generations that will serve God and that needs to happen here as well. Because it releases both the individual potential and there's an exponential potential. Remember when Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and he said, listen, this is not just for you. It's for your children, their children, to as many as the Lord our God shall call. And from that day at Pentecost, when 3,000 people got saved, here we are in the year 2022. We're the exponential result of what happened on the day of Pentecost. Can you imagine what God's going to do in Gambia the next few years through kids like Bintu and Abigail that are being reached with what God wants to do. Resurrection power impacts a nation. It's just so important to be able to reach a whole nation and God is beginning to open up doors. Saul comes from a family who was a family of influence in Gambia. His dad's a man of influence. He used to have a radio broadcast that went over the whole nation every day. Interesting, when we were there, we, we've talked about God opening doors for Saul to connect with people that would be able to give help that are there in places of power. Well, we learned an interesting thing when we were here on this trip. We were talking to Saul's sister who lives there. Their current president who came in after a dictator was overthrown after over 20 years, his wife actually is very known by Saul's sister. Turns out that when they were younger and the husband was in England working before he came back and ran for president and was just getting started in business, his wife was back in Gambia. And literally, they were barely surviving. And Saul's sister, who has a dress shop, a clothing store, would give her clothes on consignment so she could sell just to survive. And today, she's the wife of the president of Gambia. Pray 
that God's going to open doors that are going to be connections that will reach the highest levels and that God is going to begin to save people in leadership in the nation of Gambia and that God's going to give Saul Manuel of those opportunities. Churches are going to be planted. One of the exciting things is Pastor Dan and Pastor Hope, in the very near future, the school is going to be the site of the first church of shared blessings and they're going to be the pastors. They already raise young people up. When we were in their service last Sunday, they had several young people. This one girl took the offering. They had someone else who prayed. They did multiple things in the service because they're already raising up young people. And they're going to raise up people that will be pastors. Pastor Paul, whose little daughter Grace, he told Saul Manuela this week, I want to get credentialed under share blessings. And then there's a whole outreach center at a little town called Fala that's about 20 or 30 miles from the school where there's a building that's been built to do retreats in the future. But guess what it's going to be? After the church at the school begins to raise up the pastors, there's going to be a pastor sent out to Fala, and that's going to be a church plant. There's another piece of property that we help to buy that is going to be used. And so within the next three or four years, there's going to be at least three churches that are going to come up under shared blessing And I believe it's going to go to where there's literally hundreds of those churches, maybe thousands in the days that are ahead. Because you see, God wants to impact a nation. God breaks the power of religion and witchcraft so that whatever it is in Gambia, I believe with all my heart that Gambia can be a Christian nation and will be a Christian nation. And I believe in the same way, listen, you and I are in a time where we need God's power. But here's what God's doing. Just recently, Pastor Hope shared with Saul Manuela, they do regular events with the kids outside of the school for spiritual growth. They had an evening with the kids. Twelve of those children received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you, God's getting ready to release a move of God in the nation of Gambia through shared blessings. And you know what? God wants to do that right here. God's ready to move. If I look at what's happened these last four years and what happened with Saul and then COVID, what's happened in our nation, the enemy has thought he's got us down, but I'm going to tell you something, he's a liar and we're going to put our foot on his head and the power of resurrection God is going to prevail and we're going to see God do amazing things. He's going to change the nation. (laughs) Resurrection power overcomes and conquers every obstacle. There's something I've been waiting to tell you all morning. Right after I have a drink, I'm going to tell you. You prayed as a church for Saul's healing for a long time. And we've watched him improve, but still have symptoms. And I remember Grace and I had told them a long time ago, when you get ready to go back, If it's helpful and you would like, we'll go back with you when you go back for that first trip. And so they'd ask us, will we do that? I never dreamed, I did, but I didn't really fully see how important this was for all the different things that are now beginning to be uh, put into a whole new place. But Saul still had symptoms, but he decided, I'm going back regardless. And so he made the decision to do that. The other day, when Saul Manuela arrived in Gambia, and he stepped foot on the ground, every symptom went away. It was amazing to watch, because he's had to be so careful what he eats. He's had to be so careful not to overextend his energy. And I'm going to tell you something. He has a lot more energy than I do now. And uh, I saw him eating food that he wouldn't have eaten six months ago, and his stomach was fine. We serve an amazing, healing God. 
And you may go through years of struggle and challenge where it seems like it's never going to be okay. But our God is faithful and he overcomes every obstacle of the enemy. And I'm so thankful. The other thing that Grace and I noticed is that there is a new boldness in Saul Manuela. There's just a new determination in them. And, and they're, trust me, they're tough cookies. They fought hard in the middle of adverse circumstances for a long time. But I'm going to tell you something. There's an empowering that has happened in them that I believe that there's nothing hell could do that could in any way slow them down because they're so determined. I do ask you to pray. Don't ever forget this. The war is real and the enemy is relentless. Saul's doing well. Guess what's happened? Emanuela has been having issues with dizziness and her blood pressure. We've been praying for her. I talked to them last night. She's better. But we need to pray through for her that the enemy isn't going to now be able to take what he's had to release in Saul. He's not going to put it on her. They are going to both walk in health and healing and strength. And we're going to pray that into completeness. Because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. And we are going to triumph every time. We don't live from valley to valley to valley. We live from mountain to mountain to mountain. We get through the valley, but we live from mountain to mountain. We don't live from defeat to defeat to defeat. We live from victory to victory to victory. Have you ever been around people that they always find the dark side? Oh, the sun's shining today. Yeah, but it's going to be so hot. Oh, give me a break. Can't you see anything positive? Can't you see anything of the power of God? Listen, church, we can't dwell in the negative. You don't deny the realities, but you don't camp out on the negative. You camp out on the word of God, and the word of God will bring you through every time. And then this is the summation of all this. Resurrection power sets the trajectory for a world-changing move of God. I'm going to tell you something. The enemy thought he was going to stop the ministry of shared blessings in Saul and Manuela. And there was a four-year what seemed to be slowed down. But in the process of that slowdown, guess what began to happen? Here they are stuck back in the States. So what does God begin to do? He begins to send people to them and say, we have such and such goods. Would you be able to use those in Gambia if we gave them to you? And I think they filled four containers, if I remember the number, and sent over with all kinds of goods and food. And literally, even right now, Food's being distributed from the last container that, container that arrived just before we got there. And so Saul has shared some of that with his uh, sister to share with people that they know in the Muslim world. And you know what he told me last night? He said his dad told him, now son, I want you to be ready at a moment's notice to drop things. Because as we begin to distribute that food, there's going to be people that I'm going to want to introduce you to so they know where the food's coming from. Let me tell you something. God's up to something. In the four years the enemy thought he would slow them down, God just opened up new doors. He brought Pastor Dan and Pastor Hope, and they're going to be strategic to what happens on the ground. Meanwhile, God began to raise up these containers. When they were here the last time, we, we had a, a dinner with, with uh, Steve and Danae, and they started talking about computers they need. And Danae shared with them there's an organization here in Fort Wayne that was inspired by Samuel Morris. It's a great story in itself from the 1800s who came to Taylor University as a student. And uh, what God did was an amazing thing. And it's inspired all these different things. And one of the things is this company. And they provide computer systems that schools can use for education without needing the internet. And so Saul and Manuela said, man, we need one of those. So they connected them. They're talking. They went back to Vancouver, Washington, where they live in the States. They're meeting with a dear lady who has been in education for years out there. And the lady says to them, she says, 
I, I want to help you with something with your ministry. And they were telling her about what they were doing with the computers. And she said, I don't know what this will do. But she said, before I met you, I was told by God to give you a check. And here it is. Guess what it was? It was the exact amount to purchase those computers. And those computers were in that container that arrived just before we got there. So what ended in a time that seemed to not have anything has opened up a whole other avenue that's going to touch the nation. And what God's going to do. As a matter of fact, the very next construction project is going to be building a warehouse on the school property so that they have a way to handle the things coming in from the containers. And then long term, there's going to be another property purchase that'll have a bigger warehouse as that increases. And that'll become the maintenance building for the school. God's up to something. And I want to tell you something. When we begin to let God work, he takes and he, he brings things to a new trajectory. And ministry begins to burst out. Whatever you're up against this adversary in your life or adversarial, don't be discouraged. Don't let the enemy tell you that it's defeated. If there's a door that's shutting, get ready. There's an open window God's getting ready to bring. God's got it worked out. He's going to do an amazing thing as we give ourselves. I believe with all my heart, God's got great things he's doing at LifeBridge Church. We had 40 guys at the breakfast yesterday morning. That was just a wonderful morning. Ladies, see if you can outdo us next week. And then I want you to be in real prayer with us. Because I believe that this summer, as we bring new personnel that God's leading in, we're going to watch youth and children's ministry at LifeBridge take on a whole new trajectory. Because we've got to reach the next generation. I want you to be believing with us that God has so much that he wants to do. I want us to begin to believe for what he's going to expand even further in missions. There's already groundwork being laid for next year. I don't care what's going on with COVID and the rest of the world. Next year, we're going to send a construction team out for a project and, and probably will be in the Dominican Republic. But get ready. God wants to take us to whole new levels. That's why i Give God such glory because you're faithful and you're giving and you're giving to missions. It's making possible these things for us to do what God wants. And what's going to happen, we're going to watch God break through and we're going to see the fullness of all that God desires be accomplished in Gambia, in LifeBridge, and in all of us. And then God always has the overflow. We're on the way home. We're in the airport in Gambia. And we're in line, and there's a gentleman right behind me, and uh, we start talking. He's Gambian. He said, uh, I'm headed back to the U.S. I live in Georgia. He says, I grew up in Gambia, and I went to the U.S. for education as a young man and thought I'd come back and heal the world. I thought, I'm going to pay attention to this. He said, instead, I ended up, and I've spent my entire career being a pharmacist in Georgia. And he says, but I'm retired now, so I'm coming back and forth between Gambia and the United States. So we just had a nice little chat. We get on the plane, and then we land in Brussels. We're walking through the airport, and there's this guy again. And he comes up to me because I told him about the school and about what Saul Manuela does. He says, is there some way that I could get in touch with them? Because I'm here. Maybe I could volunteer. So I gave him my card. He's, gonna, he's supposed to send me an email so I can connect him with Saul and Manuela. And I don't know if he's a believer yet or not. It wasn't the right time to push that button. But what I do believe that God is going to work in him. See, in just the little thing of being in the middle of the airport and all of the junk that goes on with having to travel, there was a divine appointment. That's the overflow. What, a, what appointment does God have for you? today, this week, what are you going to do that releases resurrection power? The cross is empty. The tomb is empty. Father, help us to walk in that. Help us to live in that and to see the fullness of it in Jesus' name. Maybe you're here or you're online with us today and you don't know Jesus. I'm going to pray a simple prayer and ask you to pray it with me right now. And as you pray that prayer, Jesus is going to come into your heart. Would you pray it with me? Say, Jesus, Come into my heart. 
be my Savior. Forgive my sins. Give me eternal life. I receive you now. In Jesus' name, amen.